Okay, very good morning everyone. This is, um, this is the briefing being delivered for the 18th of April 2018. Um, I'll be talking uh, mainly focusing on the equity market, uh, the crude market, as well as your commodity market today, given the fact that we have key data coming out of the UK uh, in, in terms of your inflation numbers. This is following on from the average hourly earnings that we saw get released yesterday. Uh, we've also got some Department of Energy numbers, so supply and demand numbers coming out of the United States. Um, so we'll be covering the oil market, and plus the equity market took quite a sharp turn yesterday and quite a sharp rally, particularly in the technology space. So we're going to be having a look at that. Um, then Sam's going to jump on the mic to look at the charts a little bit more technically to see where we may uh, go from there on out. Okay, so we start off by having a look at the charts. Let's first turn towards the equity market, which saw quite a bullish run yesterday. So having a look at the S&P, there was a level of key interest here in the S&P 500. So if we look at a slightly longer time frame, if we go back on to 480, um, what you can see is once these trade wars started to escalate and we started to see the S&P take a bit of a downturn, so initially the inflationary fares and this uh, trade war issue started to arise, this was really the last swing we saw in the S&P 500. Um, from around the 2,800 mark down to about 2,550, but a clear swing in the market. So first and foremost, what did work pretty well was a, a Fibonacci, if we drew this up here. From the highs to the lows of the swing, we saw that this 50 mark on the Fib worked quite well. There was previous resistance and then it was resistance once again. So that was uh, quite a key level defining the top of this mid swing here. And yesterday, given the fact that we're seeing a beat on earnings across the board in the United States, be it financials, be it um, technology, we finally saw the S&P 500 as start to break through this level. And once we got through there, really finding some legs, almost continual bullish candles to the upside, um, ultimately finishing yesterday from its lows to its highs, starting, starting here and finishing around its lows, nearly up a whole percentage point which is quite bullish of a move considering where S&P, the equity space generally in the United States has been under a bit of pressure. And a lot of the times what we were seeing previously um, as a point of note is a rally during the European session um, and then a fall come the US close rally here during the European session, mid US session, then a fall once again into the close. Uh, similar sort of story here, falling into the close on numerous occasions for maybe about the past fortnight. So. To see us open nice and low and then close nice and high, I feel this is a very bullish signal uh, for the U.S. equity markets. This is not just driven, not just driven by um, uh, your earnings, but also the fact that we are starting to see some of this uh, heightened tension of trade wars start to subside. That's not to say they're completely gone. We did see um, sort of sanctions come into play. Um, with the ZTE Corporation where they're no longer allowed to use any US manufactured products but the market sort of put this on the back burner we'll, you see this quite often where if there's one talking point which gets talking about, spoken about or tweeted about in this situation a lot it starts to have a lesser impact on the market so at the moment trade wars have taken a back seat ultimately the US economy is doing well this is allowing stocks to gain um, and this is why we've seen sort of your benchmark index from the United States uh, make quite a bit of a rally. But if we then look at it a little bit more by sector, so if we then turn to the NASDAQ, well, this outperformed yesterday compared to uh, the S&P 500. So if we have a look here, if we look from our lows to our highs, so if we open around here, close around here, 1.8, 1.86%. So almost a double, um, double these double a strong rally here in the US tech sector. Similar technical levels being taken out initially and then that's allowing us to make a clean run. Just finding some resistance at the moment from the high we saw on the 27th up here. Um, just capping this move to the upside at the moment. Now, um, this was really led by Netflix which saw a beat on expectations for its subscription subscriber numbers. Um, so this is your technology shares rallying. Uh, this was also coupled with the fact that we're seeing some of the pressure come off um, your other technology shares, such as Facebook. So if we transition, see where the S&P finished, you can see Facebook finished 2.32% up. So Facebook, Netflix, 
Amazon as well, up 4.32%. Some of your large technology sectors really up here in the green, allowing then this uh, equity move to rally. But once again, having a look at this, there was no sell into the close, really bullish candles, and really remaining at a high as actually. It seems like the closing candle was right there at its high. So quite a bullish move to the upside. But what is the underperformer at the moment is the Dow Jones. So anybody who was trading yesterday, you could see that the price action here or, or the moves in this market were rather tame. Um, they did initially have a bullish open, taking out these technical levels, but ultimately really capped by its R2 level and sort of underperforming here. And this did sort of finish on its lows. Now, as to why this has happened, well, we need to put this first into context. Having a look at your financial stocks, they have been the outperformer. Um, they have been the outperformer for all of 2017, at least in the first quarter part of 2018. Um, this is on the back of Donald Trump. Donald Trump being pro-business. Pro-business means deregulation and lower tax, uh, lower corporation tax. So having pushed through the corporation tax um, cuts and active engagement on the topic of reducing regulations, and which regulation in particular we're talking about, this is the Dodd-Frank Act. Um, so now with Trump talking about now easing this as well, being very pro-business, being very friendly in that, in that respect, we've seen financial firms outperform. Since November 2016, where, they, um, where Donald Trump was elected, we've seen financial stocks soar to over 40%. Whilst if we compare this to the S&P 500, however, um, the S&P 500 has only gained 26%. So this is a bit of profit taking despite the beat on earnings we have been seeing. So this is looking at the KBW back index, uh, KPW, KBW back index. Um, this is looking at your financial stocks and shares. Uh, in the United States. You can see that, yes, we have dipped, but we still are at the highs we've seen around the end of 2017 and you know, notably higher from where we were at the US election time. So I'd say this is a combination of things in, in, in terms of your financial stocks. First of all, the uh, profit taking. This They have been the outperformer. Earnings have come out. This also feeds into the fact that this is a buy the rumor, sell the facts. So first of all, they have been outperforming. Second to this, uh, there was no surprise to investors or traders that we're seeing bank earnings beat an expectation. This is quite normal. Um, first of all, in the way that these expectations are, are created, you'd see analysts come to these banks and these banks then talk down um, their, their forecasts. This means that when they do beat on then the expectation, their shares rally. Coupled with the fact that 2000 and the, well, the end part of 2017 was not very volatile, but the whole of 2018 thus far has been quite volatile. So that was four months of volatility. In volatility, stock shares, bonds, gold, everything is moving. And if things are moving, people need to be getting in and out of positions. And you see an increase in activist trading. So as you see an increase in activist trading, there's more people getting in and out of markets. Now they're not, they're not trading this through direct market access, they're going through investment banks to be able to buy their tens, if not hundreds of thousands of contracts on any certain product. So as you see this trade volume start to increase on the back of higher volatility, you see that the trading desks, um, which have been suffering now for a number of years, um, start to become more profitable. And this obviously increases the earning capacity of banks. So people would have been buying these financial stocks leading up to their earnings and now on the back of it selling. So I wouldn't say this is anything to be fearful of at the moment, that the financial stocks are underperforming. Um, it's been a combination of things which have been driving this market higher, and I think this is just some profit taking, and that is reflected in sort of the industry at the moment. So risk on across the board at the moment. S&P higher, Dow higher, Nasdaq higher. Nasdaq has been outperforming. Keep a, keep an eye on this level that's being tested here, but Sam will be on the mic in a moment uh, to discuss the technicals a little bit further. That being said, let's have a look a quick look at European stocks. So European stocks relative to US stocks have been underperforming 2018. Um, but what you can see, nice bullish move following in line with uh, your, let's have a look here. So just coming out to test the 26th at the moment. So yeah, just sympathy move here in your Euro European equity market as well coming up higher. And that I'm sure is reflected in Euro stocks as well. So all equity markets lifted, Asian markets were lifted as well this morning. Next, I want to quickly turn to oil. So. I'm going to look at oil chart here. This has been an interesting market as a whole, particularly because of this whole Syrian situation as well. 
um, which at the moment has seemed to have just dissipated in terms of a new risk. Um, but ultimately, after driving high, after breaking these 2018 highs, taking out the 66 level mark, here the oil market has just been consolidated and been trapped in a range for about a week. Um, so the drive higher following um, on from the Saudi comments about oil reaching $80, coupled with the fact that the tensions increasing in Syria, uh, meaning that there was supply fears. Screen's not updated. Okay. Apologies. Yeah, so sorry guys, transition just come through. So having driven higher on the back of um, OPEC's comments as well as the the supply fears following tensions building up in Syria and there being in a key geographic region in the Middle East, um, now having started to consolidate over here, finding some support at the near terms around the S1 level, but what we did see is oil take a bit of a bid here as well. Um, and this was driven furthermore, first by the risk on move, and then yesterday we saw our Department of Energy numbers, um, which came out as such. So, crude was a drawdown of 1 million, Cushing was a drawdown of 1 million, gasoline a draw of 2.5, and distillates a draw of eight, uh, 850,000. That's a draw across the board, um, which really, nothing major. I wouldn't say that these are any numbers like draw of 4 or 5 uh, million, which would be on the slightly more dramatic side with your API numbers, um, but still a consistent drawdown um, on all, all four crude gasoline uh, distillates and Cushing, which has further supported the price of oil and is at the moment just trending a little bit higher. This has also been helped by this prolific weakness we've seen in the dollar as we're trading um, barrels of uh, dollars per barrel of oil, um, which has been supporting oil in the medium term. But we also have OPEX meeting on Friday, so there have been outside calls that, um, well, from Kuwait, there have been comments saying that they they will have discussions on whether to extend the cuts, which currently stand at 1.8 million barrels per day. Um, and it's more about just making sure that we don't have a hard ending, so that we may see that the cuts are tapered off going into 2019, as opposed to just, well, the cuts end 2000. Uh, December 2018 and then, and then everyone is free to produce as much oil as they want and I think this makes logical sense it's a there is a, a trade-off when it comes to oil it's whether or not we produce more at lower prices or we produce less at higher prices and at the moment it's almost like do you want to lose this momentum that we've been seeing to the upside in oil and I'd kind of agree if you're trying to maximize profits and trying to make the most of this bullish run higher in, in oil prices and probably discussing and just starting to feed into the market um, the fact that we may not be coming ending the cuts um, as abruptly as you may think would allow oil to gain some momentum and yes producing slightly well slightly more, less um, at a much uh, higher price would be favorable if you think about when these cuts were introduced this is when oil was down at a 30 40 dollar mark so if we have a look here so you know we, we were trading around about down all the way down here when these cuts were first introduced so they have been successful and I think it would be I personally think that they would they would be more than happy to discuss uh, further cut to production just to allow this momentum to continue to gain so while the while the storm is sort of working in their benefit to so extend it as much as possible so again with oil, we have DOE numbers coming out today at 3.30, so I wouldn't be being too aggressive with this. Uh, normal sort of price action we'd see on a Tuesday. So Friday, we drove higher on the back of the API numbers. Europeans have come in, taken it a little leg higher, uh, but now the market will generally sort of stabilize, and I wouldn't be surprised if we just hang around this R1 level uh, up until 3.30. The main focus, however, Again, I don't think it's going to be the numbers. It's going to be this uh, U.S. production number, um, which really has been the cause of volatility. Um, and you can see U.S. production over here. Right now, all-time highest, the highest since, well, these records began. Um, so U.S. production continues to ramp higher. And I think with prices continuing to creep higher, we'd continue to see this. So there will come a breaking point where we see that the production uh, from the United States is it really starts to become a major talking point for traders and we start to see 
oil make a reversal. I'm not predicting that today, but I think this this U.S. output production number is becoming ever more important to monitor, and no doubt today. So in the absence of any major drawdowns, let's say draw of four to five million or a build of four to five million, um, which would give you that knee-jerk reaction on the headline, um, your trend confirmation or continuation may be given by your U.S. production. Now, with this with how oil has been moving recently, I think I need fall in production, which I think is unlikely. But if we do see a fall in production, that would really give traders a signal, okay, it's time to buy, and then we'll definitely see a break of this range. Um, but at the moment, definitely on a bullish run in oil. Um, so I wouldn't be too aggressive with this this morning. And finally, I just want to have a look at the FX space. And just turning to dollar yen just for a moment as a sort of gauge for your risk assets. We have seen the yen being sold um, now for a while as we see this risk start to dissipate and we're seeing that this morning so dolly yen rising over here yen being sold ultimately i don't think this is the fx market really hasn't been um, all too exciting recently everything's sort of in a trend at the moment but yesterday what i did want to mention here is how well this s1 level worked and i think sam will be discussing this but it was sort of a perfect trend technical level drawing up the, these lows here as well as the European low working to support the price of dollar yen at this price here and then just driving higher. Um, the dollar as a whole has been, we did see a modest uptick in the price of the dollar yesterday. So if we go into maybe an hourly chart, you can have a look, it's a little bit better. So yesterday we did see a bit of weakness coming into the dollar, only for that to reverse and the dollar actually to finish a bit higher. At the moment, the dollar index is also up 0.1%. Um, so after quite a bit of selling, we can see this continued pressure, continuing pressure in the, in the dollar. We are seeing a little bounce here, probably a little bit of profit taking. <clears throat> and then just to transition over once again, we're now going to look at cable. Uh, because today is quite an important day. It's been relatively volatile in sterling today, um, as we've seen this dollar take a bit of a bid. Um, but yesterday, what we did see was your average hourly earnings numbers come out. So with yesterday's numbers, um, we were expecting your average hourly earnings X bonus to be uh, 2.6. They came in at 2.8. Saw a little bit of a bid go into in, in, leading up to these numbers. So let me just mark up when the numbers came out. So this is the numbers coming out here at 9.30. Um, so we're expecting 2.6 for your average hourly earnings X bonus and 2.8 for your average hourly earnings including bonus. So what you saw is your X bonus came in as a beat. We got 2.8 versus 2.6 expected. And your average hourly earnings including bonus came in line uh, at 2.8%. Um, so why did, why did Cable take a bit of a stumble here? Well... We did have a beat on the average hourly earnings, but if you have a look at where cable was initially priced, we were sort of already expecting uh, in terms of where the risk really rose. Um, Sterling was already on the front foot, and coming into this data, we saw quite a bit of a bid go into this market. Um, so it was almost buy the rumor and then sell the fact. So um, this just allowed Sterling to rally, and then the R1 working very well. Uh, Sterling comes under a little bit of pressure. Following on from the dollar strength, we saw as well. Um, and at the moment, just sort of consolidating. We had this came down here just to test yesterday's lows. Pivot working pretty well today. Um, not a market I'd be looking to get involved in any time in the next sort of um, 35 minutes. We have inflationary numbers coming out. I'm sure Anthony was discussing this yesterday. Uh, the reason that the average hourly earning numbers are so important is that we were seeing stagnant wage growth, where wage growth wasn't... Um, wasn't fast enough to compensate for ever increasing inflation but inflation has been tracking lower in the united kingdom and as inflation comes down and average average hourly earnings go up this is going to be beneficial for uk consumers because there's no squeeze to them if your wages went up 2.8 percent and inflation went up 2.8 percent well actually there's no squeeze on you and you can continue to consume or spend like you did previously and that has been really what we've been seeing so Having a look at our data sets coming out, we have uh, UK inflation numbers. More, most important is going to be given to you a year-on-year number. So having a look at your year-on-year, our consensus view is for 2.7%. So 2.7% uh, 
um, would be quite comfortable given the fact that average hourly earnings yesterday averaged 2.7%. So that means, uh, in fact, the opposite of a squeeze to consumer would be taking place. Um, so expecting a number of 2.7%, allowing this inflationary pressures to start to subside. Uh, another key measure we're going to be looking at today is going to be your core inflation rate as well. So looking at your year on year number here. Please, sorry, transition across. Um, this was the UK inflation numbers we're looking at, 2.7% expected, so uh, same as uh, last month over here. I'd say if we start to see your inflation numbers start to top out around 2.93%, I'd say a break, a 3% reading or higher would cause quite an abrupt sharp move uh, in sterling to the upside. Um, if, however, we start to fall, uh, let's say getting below 2.3%, that would start to elicit some sterling weakness, uh, given the fact that the Bank of England meeting is um, not too far away, less than a month, so 10th of May. Second, we're going to look at the inflation, uh, core inflation numbers. So our expect expectation for these numbers is 2.5%. So we're seeing, we're expecting a modest rise here in UK inflation. Um, but really nothing too dramatic, well within our sort of six months range. A 2.7 reading or higher here would elicit, again, sterling strength and a, a breach of, well, I wouldn't go all the way down to 1.8%. I'd say anything lower than 2% would we'll start to see some um, sterling weakness. So in terms of your data calendar, looking at the rest of the day, you have some European inflation numbers coming out final. Now these are lesser important. We've already had your regional inflation numbers come out. Uh, and these are, furthermore, these are also your final readings as opposed to your preliminary readings. And we have your Bank of England interest rate hike, interest rate decision today. So market is expecting the interest rates to remain on hold. But we have your MPR, so this is their sort of um, monetary policy report, which is going to be of key importance. So um, this is going to be one of those interest rate decisions where you're probably expecting a, uh, a hold in interest rates, so no change, but you'll start to see comments come out quite quickly with regards to any headlines from your monetary policy report. Um, so any CAD traders out there, just be cautious of this as well. And then that leads us into 3.30 where we have your um, DOE numbers. Um, I'll be back on the mic, or Sam will be back on the mic at some point before these DOE numbers to give a bit of a wrap. Um, but that's it for me, guys. So a lot going on at the moment, just to wrap. Uh, risk on at the moment, so we'd expect that in your safe haven assets. Um, equities, definitely on the front foot. I wouldn't be too aggressive. I never like buying the high. Wait for a bit of a, a retracement before being too aggressive with the market. Oil, we have your DOE numbers later on today, so I'd like to just... Uh, uh, take a step back and sort of observe. So really, a lot of your volatility will be in the latter half of today's session. I wouldn't be surprised if we just see a bit of profit taking at a high zero in equity markets before we then see a continuation volumes pick up. All right, guys, I'm going to pass it over to Sam. If you, if you have any questions, please do drop them in the chat. Thank you, Safe. Yeah, let's have a quick look over the, well, we'll start with pounds, considering the data's out in, what's that, just under half hour. So we broke through the, well, yesterday's low, you can see, and there's a half decent opportunity for those that were in the morning, uh, in the markets around the morning. Let me just get that sort of break through. You can see we came back, after breaking that trend line, came back down, and it's come back to test the what was the previous low not too long ago around sort of eight o'clock on, on that pullback and, and since then we're still sort of creeping back towards the was the lows but I would probably be looking to exit any position at least sort of you know ten minutes before that data release uh, it comes out at half nine and that really could be what sort of shapes the rest of the, the day for that pair in terms of levels to the downside uh, obviously other than the low of the day 143 and, and the S1 you have the, the low that we made uh, for the beginning of the week and pretty much the same as Friday evening's close as well uh, so decent level of potential support there in terms of the on cable and obviously on the weekly chart we're obviously on on track to have the highest weekly close since the week before Brexit so pretty pretty unbelievable in, in, in that respect there back to intraday charts and the euro which are also similar to the pan had broke through the its low of the day with uh, the dollar uh, reaching its highs although just having a bit of a pullback now uh, and back on that level getting a bit choppy actually if you have a look you can see initially once we broke through 
uh, the intraday low, you had a bit of a retest, but now it's sort of come back and I think really it could be, well be a case, and even if it gets to the pivot point, better off just treating the, the level more as the, the higher of the day, and you can see just how important that higher the day was yesterday, and in terms of being the high of the afternoon, 124.35, uh, and a half there on the on the futures level. S1 marked up quite nicely with yesterday's low, so a decent uh, little range trade perhaps to take that into account with the the low of the afternoon that we had on on Monday as well. Aussie dollar broke through its uh, decent level support yesterday. So that S1 held quite well uh, before this morning breaking through. So I'll be keeping an eye on that if we can get a, a retracement there. S1 holding for now. Uh, which isn't too far off the, the sort of lows that we had from Monday. Uh, so the dollar's strengthening a bit this morning, albeit just having a bit of a pullback now. Uh, with the, the pound command pressure, we'll have a look at the FTSE in a minute as that's testing or not far away from its highs. Dollar yen uh, pushing up to towards that to R2, and if we get the the, the high of the, the afternoon of Monday pretty much in line, so decent resistance around there. It's been a an interesting market that, uh, that dollar yen and I think has, has always been better in the afternoon and getting a feel what equities are doing so as equities were uh, you know pushing on and then you also had a bit of dollar strength or dollar weakness it was quite hard to perhaps make a, a decision on what this market was going to do uh, I think if we can get a retracement back today to the R1 yesterday's high uh, area could be a decent opportunity to perhaps continue uh, the recent trend of this market over the last sort of month or so, which has been sort of slowly ranging higher uh, for that. So as I mentioned, we'll have a look over at the FTSE. That's held really well all morning and a bit into the afternoon on the lows of, of, uh, of Monday morning. Yes, Monday morning, afternoon, and the R1 held. Uh, not the R1, the, the higher the day held fantastic for breaking through. We're now coming up and we're not far away from today's R1. If we have a, a look at what the previous low on Monday Asian session right on that R1, could expect a bit of resistance around there. But of course with the data coming out in 26 minutes, you're probably better off just sort of leaving that alone and, and considering the R1 as a potential resistance pivot and yesterday morning's highs as the level of support for those markets. Dow Jones has found a bit of support. As you can see here, along with the, the S&P, which is still not a million miles away from uh, those highs of the day. NASDAQ, which is really leading the way, not long ago just made another high. So I think sentiment has to be purely to the upside for, for now. But taking into account, and definitely, definitely for the NASDAQ, you do have really key level just testing now. So the high of the 27th, so the S&P broke through that high of the 27th. Uh, Monday evening, NASDAQ just touching that now. So key level potentially to the upside for for, for the Nasdaq uh, if we get a breakthrough it could well be into the afternoon that you get the push uh, and then R1 would be a nice target which was actually where the breakdown on that 22nd started to happen so key level for the Nasdaq happening now if we're keeping an eye on that as that was really leading the way uh, going into the remainder of the day yesterday gold which has been I mean here you've got it on a 240 chart pretty choppy we're still near you know the, the sort of the yearly high that we made at the back end of last week you probably would want a trend line going on here from using the highs that we have made this week you've got the lows of a couple of weeks so price starting to get squeezed in I'll be focusing on on those obviously just touching up those trend lines just a, a bit better as we come up now to the higher points uh, of the trading trading day but keep an eye on those previous highs of the last sort of few trading sessions that have been getting lower uh, could get a nice breakthrough there but just keep an eye on the previous highs uh, for that oil pushed higher I mean in terms of the the high of the day it's 67.19 not necessarily a reason why it should have perhaps come back down from there but it's getting really choppy around that R1 I, I think for for those that perhaps took the short and you can see how you would definitely wanted to have taken profit using the previous high of the day uh, that we made you can see that so price pushed through let me just get the 
circle there so push through come back to find support 6692 is a great place for anyone that was short to have taken profit and anyone that wanted to continue the trend to get long so decent level of support there for, for oil holding up r1 now just a bit messy and in terms of the, if this market was to perhaps push through you would want to see a break of any sort of trend down that we, we're getting here so keep an eye on, on oil obviously the volume again will be at strongest uh, into the remainder uh, of the afternoon from two o'clock onwards and then obviously the half free data as well european equities which br broke through the r1 yes the uh, the r2 yesterday after having a bit of resistance we're now also on those highs of the day euro stocks on the high dax not far away so Again, if you get this DAX on a bit of a lower time frame, we're just breaking through or having a first sort of test at uh, you know, this sort of downward trend here. Yesterday's high and to the high of the day perfectly aligning, so keep an eye on, on that as well if the volume was to pick up uh, these levels for the DAX. We mentioned before, not seen for quite some time. Uh, in fact, the 7th of February high not far away at all so DAX really starting to to eat into the early February down move that we had and that was obviously coming down uh, in, from sort of the, the back end of, of January anyway but uh, a key level there for equities obviously the Nasdaq as we mentioned coming up to test that that point and the S&P the lows of the 20th where remember the 22nd we talked about the Nasdaq start to come down that's where we broke through and we're just sort of testing that as well for the S&P so equities are interesting points uh, of the market the dollar just taking a, a bit of a rebound you have the UK data coming out in 22 minutes so for cable traders FTSE probably best to sort of look to hold off I would say now if not in a trade uh, until that release and uh, and go from there any questions, obviously please do get them in the chat uh, and I hope you have a, a great trading day.